All are requested to please put your phone in silent mode. I declare the convocation ceremony of IIPS open. Dr. Rajiv Bhakal, Secretary to the Government of India, Department of Health Research and Director General, ICMR. Dr. Indu Bhushan, ex-CEO of Aishman Bharat, Pradhan Mantri, Jan Arav Yojana, and the National Health Authority. Distinguished invitees, my faculty colleagues, members of the staff and students, and the graduating students and their proud parents. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all on the occasion of the 64th Convocation of the International Institute for Population Sciences. I am indeed overwhelmed by the presence of Dr. Rajiv Bekhal for presiding over this function. I am also deeply honored to welcome Dr. Indu Bhushan, who has kindly consented to be the chief guest and will be delivering the Convocation address today. Friends, the Institute has completed 67 years of its glorious existence and 38 years as a deemed to be university. I'm happy to report the activities of the Institute for the year 2022-23. I'm excited to announce that altogether, 199 students will be receiving their degrees and diplomas today, a satisfying moment for all of us. Since its Inception in 1956, IAFS has been at the forefront of conducting training programs in population studies for trainees from various countries in Asia and Pacific region, as well as carrying out high quality research. The training program was initially funded by UNSCAP and later by the UNFPA of a one year duration. The Institute has trained personnel from various countries in Asia and Pacific region under this program who occupy key positions in the field of population, health and development 
in government departments, universities, and in international organizations. In 1985, IAPS was declared as a deemed to be university, leading to the expansion of its teaching program. In the current academic year 22-23, the Institute has offered one PhD program, four master's program, which include one MAMSE in population studies, second MSc in biostatistics and demography, and third, a one-year program in master of population studies for those already having another master's degree, and for an MA in population studies through a distance learning mode. Apart from this, Institute also offers a non-degree postdoctoral fellowship program. Moreover, through our sister institute, National Institute of Public Health Training and Research, NIPSTR, in Mumbai, two diploma programs are offered, diploma in health promotion education and postgraduate diploma in community health care. In the current year, 21 students have successfully completed a diploma in health promotion education and 15 students have qualified to receive postgraduate diploma in community health care. At IAPS, 33 students have successfully completed MAMSE in population studies 32 students have completed MSc in Biostatistics and Demography. 42 students completed one-year program of Master of Population Studies. IAPS offers a PhD program designed to prepare the students for a successful career. As of today, a total of 182 students are pursuing PhD at the Institute. Of them, 63 are recipients of Government of India Fellowship, 87 are recipient of UGC Fellowship, 8 from NFSC Fellowship, 3 from NFOBC Fellowship, and 14 students are without fellowship. In the academ current academic year, 33 students have quali qualified to receive PhD degree. In addition, 4 students are presently pursuing postdoctoral fellowship at the institute. The Institute has been pioneer in designing and offering master level courses in population studies through distance learning mode. IAPS established a Department of Extramural Studies and Distance Education in the year 1994 for offering courses through distance learning mode. This department was renamed as Center for Distance and Online Education this year. During its three decades of academic legacy, a total of 2,191 distance learners from India and abroad were awarded master's degree through this department. In the current year, 23 students are qualified to receive MA degree in population studies through distance learning mode. Let me also take this opportunity to thank and congratulate the program coordinators for a very successful academic year. I place on record my sincere thanks to Professor S.K. Singh, coordinator of the PhD program, Dr. Manoj Dalagrajan and Dr. R.S. Deshmi, coordinators of MAMSC program, Dr. Tia Dilip and Dr. Kaushalendra Kumar, coordinators of MSc program in biostatistics and demography, Dr. Harikar Sahuant, Dr. Suresh Jungari, coordinators of MPS program, and Dr. Kesi Das and Dr. Nandita Saikya for distance learning program, as well as Dr. Sudhi Vanche and Dr. Amol Ade, coordinators of diploma and PG diploma program from the NIPHTR. The Institute also accords high values for the quality of teaching. To make this possible, the Institute has set up an internal quality assurance cell in the year 2019. The key mandate of the accuracy is to improve the standards of all academic programs and put in place the best practices to enhance the quality of teaching and research at the Institute. My sincere thanks to Professor Arnagarajan and Professor Nadita Saikia and the team for successfully coordinating the activities of the IQS, the research centers. In addition to the existing seven academic departments focusing on teaching, three research centers are set up to promote interdisciplinary research within the Institute. They are Center for the Demography of Gender, the Center for Aging Studies, and South Asian Center for Labor Mobility and Migrants. I'm happy to inform you that the Center for the Demography of Gender has secured generous funding from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for a five-year period to develop the center into a global center of excellence in teaching and policy-oriented research 
in the area of gender and demography. The South Asia Center for Labor Mobility and Migrants is a knowledge hub supported by ILO, IOM, and UN Women to bring together various institutes in South Asian countries working in the area of labor mobility and migration. I congratulate Mr. Abhishek Singh, head of the Center for Demography of Gender, Mr. T.V. Shekhar, head of the Center for Aging Studies, and Mr. R.V. Bhagat and Kesi Das, former and current head of SALAM, for steering the activities and providing the essential leadership. The capacity building endeavors. The key strategy to achieve the mission of IAPS is to create competent professionals in India and abroad. In this regard, the Institute organized various training programs during the last one year with emphasis on methods. These include a one-way training program for the officers of the RGI on demographic concepts and techniques, a week-long workshop on survey methods and data analysis of NFHS-5, a five-day workshop and so on training program on survey methods and data analysis using large-scale surveys at ICMR, RM, RC, Bhuvaneshwar, a five-day training program on health program and impact evaluation methods along with Indian Health Economic and Policy Association, and a number of training programs on data analysis using large-scale survey data. Let me place on record my sincere appreciation to short-term training cell at the Institute led by Prof. T.V. Shager and Dr. D.P. Govind for their efforts in carrying out a number of activities this year. Another important strategy to achieve the mission of the IIPS is to generate and disseminate scientific knowledge and evidence. The Institute takes lead in debating, discussing, and deliberating on critical contextual issues that are relevant for India and other low-income and middle-income contexts. These deliberations are organized through symposiums, memorial lectures, scientific meetings, national and international seminars. I'm happy to inform you that in the academic year 22-23, the Institute organized two symposiums, one on the occasion of the International Day of Older Persons, on the theme Resilience of Older Persons in Changing World, and second on the eve of World Population Day with the launch of the United Nations World Population Prospects. To further achieve its goals, the Institute organized the three memorial lectures instituted in the name of eminent demographers who worked in the Institute like Professor C. Chandrasekharan, Professor P. N. Maribat, and Professor Asha A. Bende, delivered by Dr. Jinguk Lee from the University of Southern California, Professor Lelit Dandrona from the Public Health Foundation of India, and Professor Angel M. Foster from the University of Ottawa, respectively. In addition, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar talk was delivered by Professor Balachandran Mungekar, former Vice Chancellor of the University of Mumbai. To commemorate 75th years of India's independence, IAPS, along with Institute for Social and Economic Change, Bangalore, organized IAPS National Seminar 2023 on the theme 75 years of India's demographic changes, process, and consequences. The internationalization of education. IAPS is among the first few academic institutions in India that acted on the recommendation of the National Education Policy 2020 related to the internationalization of teaching and research at the Institute. The Institute formulated detailed guidelines for initiating student and faculty exchange program with the leading international universities, institutes devoted to teaching and research in the area of population, health, and development. These programs aim to promote high quality teaching and research at the Institute that is on par with international university and institute. To facilitate internationalization of education at the institute, the institute, the institute has set up a fully functional international relations cell. IAPA signed a memorandum of cooperation with the National Institute of Population and Social Security Research, Japan, with a mandate of exchange of scholars and encouraging collaborative research. The institute is also at the final stage of signing MOU with the leading international universities and institutes such, such as INET France, University of Rostock, Germany, University of Groningen, Netherlands, and University of Manitoba, Canada, for students' exchange and research. Furthermore, the Institute hosted 10 undergraduate students and three faculty and research staff from the University of Southampton to learn more about the field surveys. IAPS, University of Southampton, and Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai, 
organizing a quarterly research colloquium is also an initiative during this period. I take this opportunity to thank Ms. Abhishek Singh, Dr. Sudarshan Bhatta, and Mr. Dinesh More for their sincere efforts in this international relations cell. The research projects. The Institute is at the forefront of conducting high quality empirical and nationally important studies in the area of population health and development. The Institute's philosophy is to include the findings and learnings from these studies conducted at the Institute into our teaching program. Currently, 12 internally funded and 11 externally funded research studies are underway. I'm happy to inform you that IAPS, under the stewardship of the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, launched the sixth round of National Family Health Survey across the states and union territories of India. In addition to this, IAPS is, is involved in many nationally important studies, such as Longitudinal Aging Study of India, Wave 2, Global Youth Tobacco Survey, Fourth Round, Study of Global Aging and Adult Health, Wave 3, Global Adult Tobacco Survey, Wave 3, Maternal and Child Health Exemplars, etc. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation supports a five year agenda project which aims to carry out nationally relevant research studies and capacity building efforts on gender and related issues, along with Center for Gender Equity and Health, University of California, San Diego, USA. The publications. The IAPS has a well established publication cell to disseminate the findings of institute research studies among various stakeholders. The publication cell disseminates the research findings in the form of biannual newsletters, research briefs, working papers, monographs, etc. I'm happy to inform you that the members of the faculty, research staff, and students published one book and 176 research articles in leading academic journals and 31 monographs in the current academic year. In addition, the faculty members, research staff, and students of the Institute presented more than 140 research papers in various national and international seminars and conferences during this year. The academic and research resources. IAPS has a world-class library, a state-of-the-art ICT unit, a user-friendly data center, and a well-functioning social media cell. The Institute's library provides access to several important online data sources like Gesto, SenseDirect, Scopus, etc. Digitization of major collection is the main activity underway currently. I thank the entire library staff led by Dr. Praveen Kumar for their efforts in modernizing IAPS library. The ICT unit and the data center provides information, communication, and technology support to the members of the faculty, staff, and students. The data center provides access to various data sets such as sensors, NSSO, and the microdata from various large-scale household surveys conducted by IAPS from time to time. I place on record my sincere appreciation to the entire ICT team led by Professor Chandir Sher, ICT in charge, and Mr. Anjali Kumar Misra, the system manager, for effectively managing the ICT and data center. To better communicate with the outside world, IAPS instituted a social media cell. Despite the fact that it is relatively a new initiative, the social media cell is very active in recent times. And, take, and I take this opportunity to thank Dr. Sinivas Goli, Dr. Pradeep Salve, Dr. Mr. Somnath Chaudhle, and Ms. Priya Mudiria for their efforts in taking IAPS name to the outside world. The students and staff related resources. The Institute has a number of cells and committees to promote holistic development of the students and the staff of the Institute. The Staff Welfare Committee, the Cultural Committee, the Employees and Students Divan Cell, SCST, PWD and OBCs, EW Cell, Anti Ragging Committee, Internal Committee are some of these initiatives. The Institute has a fully functional placement cell. The placement cell is actively engaged in enhancing placement opportunities for the students graduating from IAPS. They also conduct training and skill building activities to better prepare the students for job opportunities in both public and private sectors. In the academic year 22-23, the placement cell conducted eight skill building activities for the students. I thank 
Dr. Dilip Tia, Dr. Manas Nitin Pradhan, and Ms. Air Nalini for their hard work to make placement cell active, along with Lieutenant Colonel Prasan Bode, CIO and Register of IAPS. The teaching and training program at IAPS are mostly residential. To meet the requirements of the residential program, the Institute has two hostels on the campus. The Institute has facilities for sports, recreation, which includes indoor and outdoor games and a gymnasium. I thank Ms. Abhirajita Chitapadhyaya, Hostel Warden, and Mrs. Anita Dogra, Hostel Manager, for their efforts in keeping the hostel as well as managing the affairs along with the students of the Institute. The internal committee also carried out a number of activities during the academic year 22-23 to uphold the institute commitment towards ensuring the campus free from all forms of violence, sexual harassment, and discrimination. The cell organized two lectures and celebrated Gender Equality Day, International Women's Day, National Girl Cell Day by organizing symposiums on these themes. In addition, the cell also organized straight plays and various competition on the themes relating to gender equality. I place on records my sincere thanks to the IC committee led by Professor Usharam for being vibrant throughout the year. The cultural committee led by Professor Nadida Saiki organized several activities during the academic year, which includes celebrating Foundation Day, Yoga Day, New Year Eve celebrations, and a food festival. The student council also organized a sports week with several sports events under the leadership of the sports secretary, Professor K.M. Lundi. The staff welfare committee, led by Professor Chandrasekhar, organized several events such as New Year get together, a picnic for the faculty and staff of the institute. The Institute Alumni Association conducted five lectures by renowned scholars from India and abroad and a workshop during this year. A marathon with a theme run for the health awareness in association with the US Vitamin Private Limited, as well as the help of the Student Council of IAPS was organized by the IAPS Alumni Association. The Institute is also proud of Professor K. Srinivasan, former director of IAPS, who was awarded the prestigious International Union for the Scientific Study of Population Laureate Award in the year 2023 for his wide-ranging contribution in the field of demography. IAPS family is proud of his achievements and congratulate him for this recognition. The acknowledgement. I would like to place on record my sincere gratitude to Dr. Mansukh Mandaviyaji, Honorable Minister of Health and Family Welfare and the President of the General Council, IAPS, Dr. Bharati Pavaji, the Minister of State of Health and Family Welfare, Dr. C. Rajesh Bhushan, Secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, and Chairperson of the Executive Council, IAPS, C. Jaydeep Kumar Misra, Additional Secretary and Financial Advisor, and Chairperson of the Standing Finance Committee, IAPS, and Ashish Srivastava, the former ASNFA, and Srimadhi Holly Singh, the former Additional Secretary and Mission Director, for their constant support motivation in various activities of the Institute. The Statistics Division at the MOCW extends all necessary support for the smooth function functioning of the Institute. The members of the various statutory bodies, the General Council, the Executive Council, the Standing Finance Committee, the Academic Council, the Board of Studies, deserve special thanks for guiding us in all important academic and administrative matters. I also acknowledge with thanks the Central Public Works Department for their assistance in improving the infrastructure of the Institute, particularly the new infrastructure development project, which is underway currently. I would also appreciate the support of various funding agencies for supporting several of our research and training activities. I also I am also grateful to Dr. Umesh Shanai and Dr. Roshini Ambedkar and Mrs. Natasha Swirani for providing necessary medical care and counseling support to our staff and students. And finally, I would like to place my sincere thanks to all the members of the faculty, the staff and students for their hard work and commitment in all the activities of the Institute. I'm confident that the Institute will achieve greater leaps in the coming years with the dedicated efforts of the members of the faculty, the staff and students 
as well as with the support from the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. Jai Hind. Sir, the Academic Council of the International Institute for Population Sciences has found 199 candidates qualified for the award of degrees and diplomas. I request Dr. Rajiv Bahal, Secretary, Department of Health Research and Director General ICMR Government of India to award the degrees and diplomas. So the Academic Council of the International Institute for Population Sciences has found 21 candidates qualified for the award of Diploma in Health Promotion Education. I request the coordinator, Dr. Krishnanja NP, to read out the names. Diploma in Health Promotion Education, Mrs. Anatha Patil, Mrs. Anita Javre, Mrs. Arpita Mishra, Mrs. B. Parvati, Mrs. G. Sharada, Mrs. K. Bhagi Lakshmi, Mrs. K. Rajani, Ms. Pooja Batwada, Mrs. Pooja Nirmalkar, Mrs. Prabhavati Kavle, Ms. Preeti A. Tasare. Ms. Reksha A. Tale, Mrs. Sadhana Dodwa, Mr. Shailendra C. Zade, Mrs. Shivrani Yadav, Mrs. Sita Charya, Mr. Sunil B. Mori. Mrs. Sushila Kunda, Mrs. T. Ranga Nayakamma, Mrs. Uma Gotwal.
मिस्टर वैभव जी टाइवाडी Thank you. Sir, the Academy Council of the International Institute for Population Sciences has found 15 candidates qualified for the award of postgraduate diploma in community health care. I request the course coordinator, Dr. Amol Ade, to read out the name. Postgraduate uh, Diploma in Community Healthcare, Ms. Anita Yadav, <laughs> Ms. Archana Sharma, Ms. Arti Dongre, Ms. Arti Suman. Ms. Ashwini Murlidhar Babar, Ms. Avina Chavate, Ms. Ishwari Rawat, Ms. Jyoti Shantaram More. Ms. Madhuri Jha, Ms. Poonam Shukla in absentia, Ms. Poonam Uike, Ms. Ranu Devi Mishra, Ms. Ranu Pawar, Ms. Vaishali Sonia Prasad. Ms. Sarika Ramdas Bise, Thank you. Sir, the Academic Council of the International Institute for Population Sciences has found 
23 candidates qualified for the award of degree of Master of Arts in Population Studies through distance learning mode. I request the head of the distance and online education, Professor Nandita Saikia, to read out the name. Master in Population Studies, Distance Learning. Ms. Sapna Santanu Despande, in absentia. Ms. Priya Singh, in absentia. Ms. Susmita Kumari, in absentia. Ms. Asutus Gaurav, in absentia. Mr. Bridges Falder, in absentia. Mrs. Safikunista Abid Ali Bhagwan. Mrs. Rimjim Bajpay. Ms. Varsa Pandey, in absentia. Mr. Chandamani Piyush. Mr. Chandamani Pius, Dr. Harpit Kaur in absentia, Mohammad Mizanu Rahman in absentia, Mr. Sivasis Chattupadhyay in absentia, Mr. Saurav Kumar Das, Mr. Imran Ahmed Jafri in absentia, Ms. Stuti Havinas Wagmare. Mr. Rajesh Das. Mr. Bhagwan Anis Ayu. Mrs. Rajalakshmi Sampat in absentia. Mr. Santu Sivazi Yadav in absentia. Mr. Manikananda M in absentia. Ms. Titis Pradeep Gupta in absentia. Ms. Salina M in absentia. Ms. Chupriya Chaudhary. Thank you. Sir, the Academic Council of the International Institute for Population Sciences has found 32 candidates qualified for the award of Master of Science in Biostatistics and Demography. I request the coordinator, Dr. Dilip T.R., to read out the name. MSc in Biostatistics and Demography, Mr. Abhinav Srivastava in absentia, Ms. Alisha D. Mr. Nihal Hassan. <laughs> Mr. 
मिस्टर अभिषेक यादव मिस्टर फाहिम अहमद खान मिस्टर जुडा रिचर्डसन मिस निकता भट्टाचार्य इन एबसेंशिया मिस्टर मयूर तानाजी नरुते मिस्टर जॉयदीप भरो मिस आनंदिता मित्र मिस्टर मनीष रविंद्र पर्लेकर मिस्टर पंकज चौधरी इन एक्सेंशिया मिस्टर पवन कुमार मिस्टर प्रमोद कुमार सेती मिस्टर बोधि गणेश मिस सौम्य प्रभा कचेरी मिस वैष्णवी गुप्ता मिस्टर कृष्णा गंगाधर राव धोरनालपल्ले मिस साक्षी सूर्यकांत शिंपी मिस्टर मौसुम पेगो मिस्टर तिंग वांग मिस नेहा कुमारी मिस्टर विद्येश प्रकाश गोपालकर मिस आर्त्रिका साह इन एबसेंशिया मिस लिंसी के मिस्टर सलमान मिस्टर आशीष रंजन मिस्टर राहुल सजी मिस वंशिका केशवाणी मिस्टर आकाश पटेल मिस्टर आर के ज्योति देवरॉय मिस्टर सफवान के इन एबसेंशियल Sir, the Academic Council of the International Institute for Population Sciences has found 33 candidates qualified for the award of Master of Arts, Master of Science in Population Studies. I request the coordinator, Dr. Manoj Alagarajan, to read out the.
Masters of, <coughs> Masters of Arts and Science and Population Studies, Ms. Mauli Maithi. Mr. Desai Meg Mohan in absentia. Ms. Adrika Maji. Mr. Avinish Paul. Ms. Krishna Karubakshi. Ms. Anjali Srivastava. Mr. Navin Kumar Singh. Ms. Ananya Bhaman. Mr. Prashant Kumar, Mr. Abdul Raf K, Ms. Shivani Kumaria. Mr. Jail Narendra Khadgai. Mr. Sumit Soro. Muhammad Asafan Nomi. Ms. Niranjana R. Ms. Shifali Verma. Mr. Neil Kamal Almoin Kalita. Ms. Rukmi Pradeep. Ms. Yasna Chavla. Ms. Devsmita Maji. Ms. Nandin Bhattacharya. Mr. Jyoti Kumar. Ms. Nividya Vinu. Ms. Mega Paul. <laughs> Ms. Prerna Mukti Barar. Mr. Robin Raj. Ms. Gopika J. Nair. Mr. Papa Thorti, Jagmiya. Mr. Rohit Kumar. Mr. Abhiyan Chaudhary.
Mr. Biswajit Haldar. Mr. Glory Narji Nari. Mr. Yuvraj Singh. The Academic Council of the International Institute for Population Sciences has found 42 candidates qualified for the award of Master of Population Studies. I request the coordinator, Dr. Suresh Dungari, to read out the names. Master of Population Studies, Ms. Keshvi Agrawal, Mr. Neve Pratik, Ms. Lakshmi Piyar, Mr. Satyaki Mukherjee, Mr. Sadanand Karun, Ms. Jehashi Meher, Mr. Vairi Sandeep Rajaram, Mr. Udit Vishwakarma, Mr. Nitin Kumar, Ms. Digantika Nandi, Mr. Ajit Murmu, Mr. Satyam Kumar Rai, Ms. Mo Jena, Mr. Shankar Oran, Ms. Malia Hamad, Mr. Hitosh Laha, Mr. Shubham Sharma, Mr. Ranjan Sina, Ms. Uttara Nath, Mr. Gurucharan Karmarkar, Mr. Shahbaz Ali, Mr. Gurucharan Karmarkar,
मिस अंकिता राय मिस्टर आलोक कुमार मिस्टर अब्दुल पथा मिस्टर साहेब विश्वास मिस वंदिता रंजन मिस्टर गजेंद्र गुप्ता मिस अनन्या त्रिपाठी इन अब्सेंसिया मिस्टर मोहित कुमार दुबे मिस्टर श्रेयस सुंदरेंद्र राव देशमुख मिस परामिता मुजूमदार मिस प्रीति मिस सुचेत दत्त मिस्टर नितिन कुमार मिस्टर गाड़ेकर विश्वजीत राजाराम मिस सोनम प्रिया मिस अनन्या खान मिस वैशाली सिंह मिस अनामिका चक्रवर्ती मिस्टर दिव्यांश चंडेल मिस्टर मेहरू सरदार मिस्टर दीपक कुमार अब्सेंसिका थैंक यू सर सर दी एकेडमिक काउंसिल ऑफ द इंटरनेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट फॉर पॉपुलेशन साइंसेस हैज फाउंड 33 कैंडिडेट्स क्वालिफाइड फॉर द अवार्ड ऑफ डॉक्टर ऑफ फिलोसफी इन पॉपुलेशन स्टडीज आई रिक्वेस्ट द कोऑर्डिनेटर ऑफ एस के सिंह टू रीड आउट द नेम Thank you, sir. Dikhi, Mr. Guru Vasis, Mr. 
मिस्टर सुरेंद्र कुमार पटेल मिस स्निग्धा बैनर्जी मिस प्रियंका जनबंधु मिस्टर शोभित श्रीवास्तव इन एसेंसिय मिस्टर गुलसन कुमार मिस अपयशील मिस्टर डोनाल्ड आर इन एबसेंसिया मिस्टर सुयश मिश्रा मिस्टर पीयूष कांति खान मिस्टर स्ट्रॉन्ग पीलर एम मिस्टर काशु आमिर खान मिस्टर सुलेमान केम मिस नूतन कुमारी मिस दीपिका फुकन मिस्टर संतोष बी पाड़ मिस्टर नावीद अली खान मिस्टर बाल हसन अली इन एक्सेंसिया मिस्टर प्रकाश कुमार मिस परमिता देवनाथ मिस देवरूपा गुप्ता मिस एद्रिता बैनर्जी मिस मीना कुमारी मिस्टर बेदान तालुकदार मिस्टर बिबीसन भूयन इन एक्सेंसिया मिस पारुल पुरी मिस्टर अरविंद यादव मिस भारती मौर्य मिस मीनाक्षी विश्वकर्मा मिस मिली दत्ता इन इन एक्सेंसिया मिस्टर अजीत कुमार कनौजिया मिस्टर अजय गुप्ता इन इन एक्सेंसिया 
Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Sir, I request the chief guest, Dr. Indu Bhushan, ex CEO of Aishman Bharat, and the National Health Authority, Government of India, to present the medals. So from the last few years, Dr. Asha A. Vente gold medal for the best student of MAMSC in population studies has been instituted by the Institute of Health Management, Ashish Gram Rajana Trust, Panchot, in memory of Dr. Asha A. Vente, former professor IAPS. I request Dr. K.C. Das to read out the citation. <laughs> Dr. Asar Atmaram Bhende Gold Medal. Professor Asa Atmaram Bhende was born on 1st October 1928. She has three master degree. First one in sociology from Bombay University, second in social work from Tata Institute of Social Science, and third in public health in University of California, Berkeley, USA. And she also has PhD from Tata Institute of Social Science. She was a faculty in IAPS during 1963 to 1988. She retired in 1988 as a professor. She was, she was the joint author, most popular book titled Principles of Population Studies, which is a test book on demography and represents the complexity of population dynamics lucidly and has been widely used by the students of population studies. Professor Hende worked as a consultant to ILO, UNFPA, Rockefeller Foundation, Foundation in Research in Health System, Ahmedabad, National Association for the Blind. She served as a chairperson of the Asis Gram Ratna Trust, the Institute of Health Management, Pachod, Maharashtra, where she was active till her last breath. Professor Bhende was a rare combination of artistic mind and academic temperament. The International Institute for Population Science is privileged to announce Dr. Asa Bhende Award, instituted by the Institute of Health Management, Pachod, Maharashtra, for the overall best performance in the MAMAC course in population studies. So the Academic Council of the International Institute for Population Sciences recommended the award of Dr. Asha A. Bente gold medal to Ms. Shivani Kumari A. Prosecutor first rank in MAMAC in population studies. I therefore request the chief guest that Asha A. Bende gold medal for the academic year 21-23 may be awarded to her. The Academic Council of the International Institute for Population Sciences recommended the award of the IIPS Silver Medal to Mrs. Krishna Kapoor Bakshi for securing second rank in MAMSC in Population Studies. I therefore request the Chief Guest IAPS Silver Medal may be awarded to her.
No, because there is always a reading citation there. Sir, from the last few years, was a Sukhuba Mukherjee Award for securing first rank in the Master of Science in Biostatistics and Demography has been instituted by his family and students in memory of Prof. Sukhuba Mukherjee, Professor IIPS. I request Prof. T.V. Shager to read out the citation. Professor Sugumar Mukherjee Gold Medal. Professor Sugumar Mukherjee, born on 15th May 1931 in Varanasi, retired from the post of Professor and Head, Department of Mathematical Demography and Statistics at IAPS on 31st May 1991. Before joining IAPS in 1965, Professor Mukherjee served in the Department of Statistics at the Patna University. He was officiating director of IAPS during September 1985 to October 1986. He also served as professor in the University of Benghazi, Libya, from 1967 to 1972 and from 1974 to 1976, and also served in UNDP, North Korea, as a consultant after his retirement. Professor Mukherjee occupied the prestigious Garware Chair of Social Sciences at Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. Professor Mukherjee was a teacher par excellence at the core of his heart, and moreover, an exceptional researcher with a deep sense of belief in the use of statistics to simplify the understanding of complex reality. As a great teacher, distinguished demographer, and a humble person, he will always be remembered by his students, colleagues, and friends. The International Institute for Population Sciences is privileged to announce Professor Sukumar Mukherjee Gold Medal, instituted by his family and friends for the best performance in MSc program in biostatistics and demography. Thank you. Sir, so the Academic Council of the International Institute for Population Sciences recommended the award of the Professor Sukuma Mukherjee Gold Medal to Ms. Vanshiksha Keshwani for securing first rank in MSc Biostatistics and Demography. I therefore request the chief guest that the Professor Sukuma Mukherjee Gold Medal may be awarded to her. So the Academic Council of the International Institute for Population Sciences recommended the award of the IAPS Silver Medal to Mr. Judah Richardson E. Securing second rank in Embassy Biostatistics and Demography. I therefore request the chief guest the IAPS Silver Medal may be awarded to you. So in the past few years, Dr. C. Chandrasekharan Gold Medal Award for securing the first rank in Master of Population Studies has been instituted by Ms. Lakshmi Chandrasekharan in memory of Dr. C. Chandrasekharan, former director, IAPS. I request Professor Chandrasekhar to read out the citation. <laughs> Dr. C. C. Chandrasekharan Gold Medal. Dr. Shri Chandrasekharan, born on 1911 at Nagpur, had many distinctions to his credit. Having done his PhD in 
statistics from University of London. He held various important positions. Among these, his appointment as the first director of IIPS, formerly known as Demographic Training and Research Center in 1959, Regional Advisor in Population Division, United Nations Economic Commission for Asia and the Far East, Bangkok, and Senior Advisor on Policy and Planning, UNFPA, New York, in 1972 are of particular significance. Dr. C. C. Chandrasekharan was the first person from the developing countries to be nominated as the President of International Union for the Scientific Study of Population, IUSSP, in 1969. He was a life member of Indian Academy of Sciences a member of IUSSP since 1949 and was an associate member of Institute of Egypt, Cairo. The Chandrasekharan Deming formula for the estimation of birth and death rates using dual records and his work on the evaluation of family planning program are well known. The Masur population studies which was done under his stewardship was the first demographic survey conducted in developing countries. Dr. Chandrasekhar was luminary scholar in the field of population and widely known for his generosity and compassion towards his fellow demographers. We are privileged to announce Dr. C. Chandrasekhar gold medal instituted by Mrs. Lakshmi Chandrasekharan in memory of Dr. Chandrasekharan for the overall perf best performance in Master in Population Studies. Thank you. Sir, so the Academic Council of the International Institute for Population Sciences recommended Dr. C. Chandrasekharan gold medal to Ms. Kadima Majumda for securing first rank in National Population Studies. I therefore request the Chief Guest that the sentence Dr. C. Tender Second Gold Medal may be awarded to her. The Academic Council of the International Institute for Population Sciences recommended IAPS silver medal to Ms. Malika Ahmed for securing second rank in Master of Population Studies. I therefore request the Chief Guest that the IAPS silver medal may be about to present. So from the last few years, Dr. K. Srinivasan Gold Medal Award for securing first time in Master of Arts in Population Studies in Distance Learning Mode has been instituted by Dr. K. Srinivasan, former director and emeritus professor, IAPS. I request Professor S. K. Mohandi to read out the citation. K. Srinivasan Gold Medal. Professor K. Srinivasan, born in 1934, made valuable contribution in the field of population study, studies in the country. He obtained master degree in statistics and obtained master's in public health degree. He has obtained a doctor degree in, demo, in demography too. He held senior academic position 
in the University of North Carolina, US, and the Australian National University at Canberra. As a director and senior professor of the IAPS at Mumbai, from 1978 to 1992, he expanded the academic scope of the institute by making it deemed university. Professor K. Srinivasan is the first Indian to be awarded as a prestigious International Union for the Scientific Study of Population, IUSSP Laureate Award for 2023. He was recipient of the Stral of Honor from the People's Republic of China, Beth Prakash Memorial Award from the National Institute of Health and Family Welfare, New Delhi, in 1995. He was a member of the National Statistical Commission, Government of India, and President of ISP. We are privileged to announce Dr. K. Srinivasan Gold Medal instituted in his honor for the overall best performance in the MA course in Population Studies in Distance Learning mode. Thank you. So the Academy Council of the International Institute for Population Sciences recommended Dr. K. Srinivasan Gold Medal to Mr. Saurav Kumar Das for securing first rank in Master of Arts in Population Studies to Distance Learning. So I therefore request the Chief Guest that, that Dr. K. Srinivasan Gold Medal may be awarded to him. The Academic Council of the International Institute for Population Sciences recommended IAPS silver medal to Mrs. Stuart Abhinash Bagmare for securing second rank in the Master of Arts in Population Studies through distance learning mode. I therefore request the Chief Guest that the IAPS silver medal may be awarded to them. The Academic Council of the International Institute for Population Sciences recommended IAPS gold medal to Mrs. Pooja Nirmal for securing first rank in diploma in health promotion education. I therefore request the Chief Guest that IAPS gold medal may be awarded to her. So the Academic Council of the International Institute for Population Sciences recommended IAPS silver medal to Mrs. Arpida Misra for securing second rank in diploma in health promotion education. I therefore request Chief Guest that IAPS silver medal may be awarded to her.
So the Academic Council of the International Institute for Population Sciences recommended IAPS gold medal to Ms. Poonam UK for securing first rank in postgraduate diploma in community healthcare. I therefore request the chief guest that IAPS gold medal may be awarded to her. So the Academic Council of the IAPS has recommended IAPS silver medal to Ms. Vaishali Sonia Prasad for securing second rank in postgraduate diploma in community healthcare. I therefore request the chief guest that IAPS silver medal may be awarded to her. Best dissertation award in MMS in population study. Sir, the Academic Council of IAPS recommended IAPS award to Ms. Mauli Maithi for the best dissertation in MMS in population studies. I therefore request the chief guest that IAPS award for best dissertation in MMS in population studies may be awarded to her. So the Academic Council of IAPS recommended the IAPS award to Mr. Ching Wang for the best dissertation in pharmacy in biostatistics and demography. I therefore request the chief guest that the APS award for the best dissertation in MSc in biostatistics and demography may be awarded to him. Sir, from the last few years, Dr. Jaya Rile Award for the best STEM paper in Master of Population Studies has been instituted by late Mrs. Shaila Rile in memory of Dr. Jaya Rile, former director IAPS. I request Professor R. Nagarajan to read out the citation. Dr. Jaya Rile Award. <coughs> Dr. J. R. Riley, born in 1931, is well known in the academic world for his outstanding work in the field of population studies and is the most distinguished alumnus of IAPS. He was the director of IAPS from 1973 to 78. Riley's method of estimating fertility from age distribution, which is the outcome of his uh, doctoral work under the guidance of Professor Kinsey Davis at the University of California is recognized as the most valuable contribution to the field of fertility. His work as technical advisor to the United Nations in the World Fertility Survey, his research at the East West Center, Hawaii, and numerous research papers published 
in national and international scientific journals reflect his immense contribution to demographic research. As an excellent researcher and dedicated researcher with great love for his alma mater, Dr. Riley will be a constant source of inspiration for students of this institute to continue research in the field of population studies. We are privileged to announce Dr. J.R. Riley Award instituted by Mrs. Shaila Riley in memory of Dr. Riley for the best term paper in Master in Population Studies. So the Academic Council of the AAPS recommended the Dr. Jair Rile Award to Ms. Sonam Priya for the best term paper in Master of Population Studies. I therefore request the Chief Guest that Dr. Jair Rile Award may be awarded to her. So, Dr. P. N. Maribat Award for the best thesis in Doctor of Philosophy has been instituted by his parents, Srimadi and Sri Padru Narayanan Bhatt, in memory of Dr. P. N. Maribat, former director IIPS. I request Prasur Shah Ram to read out the citation. Dr. P. N. Mari Bhatt Award. Professor Mari Bhatt was born on 20th May 1951 in Mangalore, Karnataka. He obtained master's degree in psychology, followed by a doctoral degree in demography from the University of Pennsylvania, USA, under the supervision of Dr. Samuel Preston, a world-renowned demographer. During 1973-75, Professor Bhatt obtained a certificate and a diploma from this institute and was a distinguished alumnus of the IIPS. Professor Nadi Bhatt took up the position of the director of IIPS in June 2005. Professor Nadi Bhatt's research reflects a brilliant combination of quantitative and qualitative perspectives in demographic research. He made valuable contributions in fertility and mortality estimations in India during the colonial period and early decades of independence. He was advised to several government and international organizations. His research is extremely pertinent to the wider community of social scientists across the globe. Professor Maribor will be a constant source of inspiration for Indian social scientists in general, and scholars in IAPS in particular, for carrying out his legacy of excellence in demographic research. The International Institute for Population Sciences is privileged to announce Dr. P. N. Mari Bhatt Award instituted by his family member for the best thesis in Doctor of Philosophy. Thank you. Sir, the Academic Council of IAPS recommended Dr. P. N. Maribat Award to Dr. Haruji Banerjee for the best thesis in Doctor of Philosophy for the academic year 2019-20 to 2021-22. I therefore request Chief Guest that Dr. P. N. Maribat awarded, Award may be awarded to her.
I request Professor D. N. Nagdebe to introduce Dr. Rajiv Bhatt. It is, a, it is a great pleasure and honor for me to introduce our President, 64th Convocation International Institute for Population Sciences, Mumbai. Dr. Rajiv Bhar is a physician scientist with specialization in pediatrics, MD Pediatrics, University of Delhi, and public health, PhD, All India Institute of Medical Sciences. He has also received an honorary doctorate from University of Bergen, Norway, in 2022 in recognition of his contribution to maternal and child health research. He has 30 years of experience leading health research and translating research to public health policy, both in India and at a global level. Dr. Burl has held the position of head of research on maternal, newborn, child and adolescent health at the World Health Organization, Geneva, during 2013 to 2022. Prior to that, he was responsible for newborn and child health research at WHO during 2003 to 2012, and was a scientist in the ICMR Advanced Center for Viral Disease and Nutrition Research at All India Institute of Medical Sciences from 1994 to 2002. His expertise includes setting the research agenda, conceptualizing, and implementing health research to address key priorities, mobilizing resources, supporting and building capacity of research institutions to implement research studies with excellence and translating research findings into public health policy and programs. Enteric and respiratory diseases and non-communicable diseases. He has also conducted and coordinated population-based and hospital-based intervention trials, cohort and case control studies, and implementation research to scale up interventions. The research led by him, which has been carried out with world-class quality, has directly impacted policy and programs. It has responded to public health needs and has been published in high-impact journals. Dr. Ball has supported population-based multi-country research, multi-country research studies in over 20 countries in Asia and Africa, and has contributed to strengthening research capacity in over 50 institutions. A few examples of public health impact of the research conducted under Dr. Burr's leadership include policy of use of zinc in treatment of diarrhea, early initiation of breastfeeding, outpatient treatment of newborns, with severe infections closer to home, which included interventions by frontline health workers with simplified antibiotic regimens in cases where they could not be admitted to a hospital. And in immediate initiation of kangaroo mother care after birth in mother newborn intensive care unit. So major achievements of Dr. Burr he conducted lead and coordinated research that had significant impact on health policy and program and had the potential of saving over 10 lakh lives every year. Contributed to major innovations for newborn and child health, including zinc in treatment of diarrhea, 
early initiation and exclusive breastfeeding, outpatient treatment of newborns with severe infections when they could not be admitted to a hospital, and immediate initiation of kangaroo mother care after birth in mother newborn intensive care unit, formulation of evidence-based global policy guidelines for the past 20 years in all aspects of maternal, newborn, child, and adolescent health. Tender research capacity in more than 50 institutions in 20 countries through hands-on work on important research initiatives, including capacity for proposal development, world-class implementation, data analysis, and incorporation of regions. Thank you, sir. Let me now invite Dr. Rajiv Bhattel to deliver the presidential address. Dr. Indu Bhushan, ex-CEO Ayushman Bharat, Pradhan Mantri Jan Aarukya Yojana, and the National Health Authority, Government of India, who is the chief guest of this convocation, Professor James, the director and senior professor of IIPS, all the faculty, staff, graduating students and their family members, and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm indeed very pleased and honored to be here presiding over this convocation on behalf of the Honorable Health and Family Welfare Minister, Shri Mansuk Mandavya Ji. At the outset, I'd like to congratulate all of the students and their proud families who are graduating today or getting their postdoctoral degrees. One thing which struck me, which before I go on, was if, even though I found roughly the, the epidemiologist statistician in me, I was looking at roughly we had equal number of men and women in, these two, in the population who was graduating. But probably, if I'm not wrong, about 90% of all medals were won by women. This is a great tribute to the Nari Shakti of this country and to the academic power, the commitment and dedication of women. What I would like to see also, which we, this is something we see over and over again in all academic uh, functions, academic awards, would like to see more of this is the same ratios or at least a reverted ratio of 50-50 at least on the dais and in the front row of this audience. Let me take the opportunity also to congratulate IIPS on the great success in imparting high quality education conducting nationwide health surveys and research for the past several decades. I'm very happy to know, I've noted all the things that you said in your opening director's remarks, that this is a great institution with great laurels. And I'm very pleased that you will also be starting some new courses, including the survey research and data analytics course. I was also very pleased to see such a large number of PhD students who were graduating this year. Normally, we are used to seeing five or 10 at the most PhD students getting a degree, but this is phenomenal that this institute produces such a large number of doctoral degrees. The work that this 
organization this institute does in terms of the surveys i'd like to mention one in particular largely because it comes from the area that i have been working in is the national family health survey i think it is probably the most anticipated survey results in the whole country that are eagerly looked forward to by the various aspects whether they are people who are academicians researchers program people or policy makers because in a way it has become synonymous with a report card of many programs and that is the power of good data high quality and good data and data that can be reproduced with reproducible methods and can be compared to get trends normally there is a tendency to do every new survey with new methods however that what it does sometimes is it makes it uncomparable with previous results so i think the quality with which this institution has done national family health surveys is very creditable whether it is in changes in fertility female to male ratio child mortality child malnutrition institutional births cesarean sections health insurance or any one of these other indicators that i have not mentioned each one of them has had an impact on programs and not many research or many activities can boast of saying that whatever you have done as part of the nfhs has impacted some program or the other so my congratulations to the institute to the director to the faculty and all the others involved with this research we are now going into the sixth round of the national family health survey and just one piece of advice that sometimes with passing time we become more and more confident of ourselves which is wonderful but it is also easy to become complacent and i would very strongly recommend that we work as hard as ever on maintaining the quality of this national survey because that is a source of so much information actionable strategic information to so many programs i would also like to mention here the longitudinal aging study in india which is fast becoming a major issue in india with our increasing life expectancy the problems of the elderly not only their health problems but their social and economic and health related and in general their life well being problems will become more and more and more important and i am sure this survey will also become one of the most important that this institution does i'd like to also mention here that there have been major changes that have been seen along these surveys that have happened I'd like to particularly point out to the control of fertility from we have come to almost a replacement rate in the entire country which is very creditable progress of the family planning program even though we as we surpass china in our population also there have been dramatic changes in let's say the institutional births which have more than doubled in the past 10 to 15 years this is been due to the fact both that we have the data and that programs have concentrated on then solving those problems that we have had another great example that i would like to mention is the people under health insurance 
In 2005-06, which is not too far ago, only less than 5% of India, people in India had health insurance. The remaining either relied on the services provided by the government or on out-of-pocket expenditure. That has been found to increase to 41% by 20, in 2019-21. Now that is a phenomenal increase. If you look at it in numbers, in a population of 144 people, 40% of people now have health insurance. And that is probably and not only probably is actually due to the largest program of this Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Aroke Yojana, which I think has changed forever the face of health service provision in India. And my very strong feeling and hope is that this 40% will keep on increasing until we get universal health coverage, health insurance for all. India has also shown great progress and I am very happy to speak to you just the day after the World Health Organization declared that the public health emergency due to COVID-19 is now over, at least the global public health emergency. And we must sit and reflect that India has performed and come out of this with flying colors. The work we have done in this country, whether it is research and development, which included making and providing the tests for diagnosis of the disease, making vaccines, whether it was development of new vaccines, two new vaccines were developed in India in a record period of time. And vaccines were manufactured in India on more platforms than any in the world. Speaks a lot to what we have been able to achieve in research and development. We were never short of COVID-19 testing. We developed 285 indigenous testing kits in India, validated them and used them in this country. We increased the testing facilities for molecular methods from a mere two or 300 in the country, 10 times or more to 3,500 facilities which can now apply molecular methods. And my belief is this will change the diagnostics across the country in the future, not only for COVID-19, but for every disease to come. But even more creditable than that, and I think people, I was watching India very closely when I was at WHO, I just joined in 2022. And what we did with our vaccination program was even beyond my wildest expectations. I had thought maybe we will reach a 50% coverage over one year and we got to 90% or more coverage with COVID-19 vaccination. To me, it showed again that India is a power that has already risen. We are now much more confident to face any calamity, any difficulty, even without help, anybody's help. In fact, India helped so many other countries during the pandemic when it was everybody for themselves. We went into vaccine matri, we went into so many other uh, programs to help the rest of the world. I'd like to end my address with a couple of things to say to all of you who are graduating from here today. Even though you may think 
you have come to an end of your academic career, even if you have achieved a postgraduate degree or a doctoral degree, please try to remember that academic excellence is a lifelong endeavor. And continue to learn, continue to read would be my advice. I have seen too many people when I'm looking at them for the posts of directors, for the posts of additional DGs, director generals, etc. that people start working in an area and continue to work only in that area and lose their breath. Read. That would be my one single advice. And read, read, and read. Not only your own subject, but whatever you whatever fancies your imagination. Because the breadth is almost as important as the depth of what you will do. So continue to make yourselves better. Don't think I finished my education. Education never ends. The second thing is, and the last one is, please remember you are privileged to get this opportunity. Think of so many others who never had that opportunity to get a higher education. So I would like to say that we as the ones who have been privileged to get this type of education, owe it to our great country to work and pay back to the nation, which has given us everything that we have. I wish each one of you the very best in your life and career and hope that not only will you transform your own lives and the lives of your families, but of all the population of India. Jai Hind. May I now request Professor K.M. Lutin to introduce our chief guest, Dr. Indu Bhushan. I am proud to introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Sri Indu Bhushan, the chief guest of the 64th IIPS Convocation 2023, who is a renowned healthcare professional and administrator. Dr. Busan has an illustrious career spanning nearly four decades with an indelible footprint across a multitude of sectors, both nationally and internationally. In 2018, as the first CEO, Dr. Busan became the face of Ayushman Bharat, Pradhan Mantri, Yan Yojana, Arogya Yojana, and the National Health Authority until January 2021. The scheme that provides financial protection to vulnerable and economically weaker section of the society. He has been pivotal in making Ayushman Bharat the largest health coverage scheme in the world, covering 550 million people, which is larger than the coverage of the United States, Canada, and Mexico combined. Throughout his career, Dr. Bhusan has been a strong advocate for universal health coverage and has worked tirelessly to improve access to quality health care for all. Prior to taking up the reign as CEO of the Ayushman Bharat, Dr. Bhusan joined the IAS, the Indian Civil Service, in 1983 of the Rajasthan cadre and served for nine years in various capacities. He has worked as senior economist with the World Bank Group prior to moving to the Asian Development Bank, where he served as Director General, East India Department, and held multiple positions within the, the bank, including Director General, 
strategy and policy department and let the Asian Development Bank's engagement with the People's Republic of China, Hong Kong, Republic of Korea, Mon Mongolia, and Taiwan, including management of the $12.6 billion portfolio comprising of more than 100 uh, projects. Besides being an illustrious administrator, Dr. Busan is also an established scholar. He holds a doctor, doctorate in econo health economics and master of health sciences from the globally prestigious the Johns Hopkins University, Baltimore, USA. He is also an alumnus of the prestigious IIT BHU, where he completed his BTEC and the gold medalist of that batch. And a postgraduate diploma from IIT Delhi. And he is also a char chartered finance, financial analyst. All his contributions, for all his contribution, Dr. Bhusan received numerous accolades, which included the prestigious Eisenhower Fellowship in 2012, and also a recipient of the prestigious Johns Hopkins University 2020 Global Achievement Award. I may then mention he is also a sports loving person who likes to play golf, breeds, and gets the latest movies and theatrical shows on the weekend. Thank you very much, sir, for your August presence today and gracing our 64th Convocation 2023. Thank you. It's my great pleasure now to invite Dr. Hindu Bhushan to deliver the Convocation address. <laughs> Uh, good, morning, good, good afternoon, everyone, uh, and thank you very much for uh, very generous and maybe overly generous uh, uh, introduction. Uh, Dr. Rajiv Bell, the president of uh, today's convocation, uh, Professor James, director of the institute, distinguished faculty, and graduating class of uh, International Institute of uh, Population studies and ladies and gentlemen. I stand here today with a lot of pride and privilege to be speaking to you on this occasion, which I know is a very important landmark in your professional career. You are closing one chapter and starting a new one. So let me first start with congratulating all of you whether you graduated from a uh, master's, postdoctoral, doctoral, uh, for completing your course and getting into new phase of life. I wish you all the best in your next phase of life. And I hope and pray that your aspirations will take wings now and you will fly higher and higher. I also see some parents and well-wishers who have come to attend and witness their awards, getting certificates, getting honors. And I want to particularly congratulate them. And I want you all to join me in applauding them because of their gratitude. We should show our love guidance for their guidance and uh, guidance and sacrifice that they've made for us. So thank you very much for joining. All of you should be very proud to be graduating from the best population study institute in the country, but one of the best in the world. The population, the, uh, exactly 30 years ago, in 1993, I too, graduated as a demographer from the Department of Population Dynamics in Johns Hopkins University, Baltimore. And I, I vividly recall my own excitement and eagerness to explore fascinating world of human population, their trends, 
and their implications for society. Since then, I've had the privilege of witnessing and participating in interesting research and discoveries in the field of demography and population studies. I want to share one anecdote with you. I used to be in the IAS, and when I was leaving to study demography, one of my senior colleagues suggested or actually advised me that study of demography was not very relevant and at least it will not find you any jobs. He said, uh, demographers have a job only once in 10 years when the census comes and after analysis of census is done, they are out of job and they wait for the next census. Of course, I didn't believe him then because otherwise I wouldn't have gone. And I believe him even less now because I can see the kind of value, kind of contribution experts in population studies can make for making of India, making of country and economic planning. Not only I find that population studies is a highly relevant subject, but it is also a very interesting one. And the interesting one is because it combines a lot of different disciplines. It is not just one discipline, it is a combination of mathematics, statistics, life sciences, geography, economics, uh, sociology, anthropology, and uh, what have you. So it's a very holistic, uh, a holistic study. So it's a very interesting study and I would recommend to any uh, any uh, scholars or students that they should uh, have some background of population studies. And I fully agree with Dr. Bell when he said that you should be studying not only in your area, but other areas and population studies provides you that platform to have a very comprehensive view of life. Now, today when you graduate, uh, you should realize that India is standing at an inflection point in its demographic history. As Dr. Bell mentioned, recently we've crossed China as the most populous country and also our own surveys done by the, our own prestigious institution has shown that our birth rate has now gone down below the replacement level. So these two phenomena uh, are extremely important. And even about 15 years ago, 20 years ago, we couldn't have imagined that our fertility rate will come down below uh, the replacement level. We have achieved that. Now, both these milestones are significant. Both these milestones provide a lot of opportunities, but also some challenges. Now, as you embark on your professional journey after graduating from here, I would like to share with you seven areas, seven exciting areas that await you. <clears throat> There's been a lot of discussion on India becoming the most populous country. Many people have seen it in a negative light. They ask how will the country support so many people? But in my view, a large and still growing country or population is not necessarily a problem. It is an opportunity. Country's destiny is largely decided by its own people, its workers, its mothers, and its professionals. We have right now about 650 million people who are the, under the age of 25, and we have 900 million people who are in the working ages. And since, because of the population momentum, as you would have studied, we'll continue to grow. In 25 years time, we, the working age population will be more than 1 billion, more than uh, 100 crores. And these are the key resources. How should we use these resources so that we can reap what they call demographic dividend is a challenge. How can we skill them? How we can we harness this dividend before this window of opportunity closes? Because our 
fertility rate is declining. So this uh, uh, opportunity that we have will not be uh, there forever. And this is the first set of questions will be asked that in a growing population, large number of population, how should we be reaping demographic dividend of this large uh, working age population and do what exactly China has done in the last 30 years or so. Second area, which Dr. Mahal also raised, is how to support our aging population. As our growth rate is slowing, we are living longer, our elderly population is increasing, both in numbers, but also in proportion. And that has profound implications for our healthcare, social security, and our workforce. And you'll have to analyze and provide forecasts to policymakers and help them in developing strategies how to support this large and growing aging population. But at the same time, we'll also have to acknowledge that elderly population is not a burden. They have creativity, they have knowledge, they have skills, they have motivation. How to harness this elderly population's skill motivation will be another challenge. And we'll have to find creative ways to tap uh, these. And that is the second area that you need to uh, look at. Third area, which is going to be extremely interesting and important, is migration and urbanization. Population is going to be moving a lot in coming decades. I can tell you that we are going to be witnessing the largest migration in human history. People are going to be moving from rural areas to urban areas. They are already doing so. They'll be moving from one state to another state. They're already doing so. But as there will be mismatch between labor supply and labor demand, there'll be greater movement. People will be moving from one country to another country. So large uh, migration is going to take place. We already see that there is a rapid urbanization which is being fueled by massive migration from rural areas to urban areas. It is putting an immense pressure on resources and infrastructure in urban areas. But the flip side of that is that rural areas are being deprived of their talent and their youth and their energy. We've seen that in China very clearly where large number of rural areas didn't have any male, uh, young male left. They had moved to urban areas and rural areas had only elderly population and children and women. Something like this could also happen here and we have to uh, do those modeling and see what kind of policies we should have in place, both, of, both for rural and urban areas where we need more civic services, but also for rural areas where we need more social safety nets. Similarly, we already see a lot of migration from one state to another state. We have states with surplus power, labor, and we have a, a state who have gone through uh, fertility decline much earlier and seeing already a shortage of labor. And once these laborers move from one state to another state, it has implications for uh, cultural clashes. It has implications for local people being suspicious that uh, people from outside are taking their jobs. And looking at this phenomenon, both from sociological perspective, but also from economic perspective and providing policy advice will be one ma major thing that you'll have to support. Same thing will happen with the international migration and in your lifetime, in the next uh, few decades, there will be a lot of demand of labor from uh, uh, developing countries where we have surplus labor. And I mentioned to you earlier that we will add 100 million people to our labor force in the next uh, 25 years. And where do they go and how do they uh, support us at the time when we are seeing productivity gains and uh, decline in demand for manual labor. So that is another area. Fourth area, which is very fascinating, uh, and you'll have to deal with this, is climate change. Climate change has far-reaching implications. 
<coughs> on population patterns, including migration, resource allocation, and health. And population scholars like you must study the intersection of population and environmental factors to identify where the vulnerable population is and what kind of strategies should be developed for adaptation and improving resilience. And fifth area is very important, close to my heart, and I was so glad that Dr. Mahal uh, referred to this, is about gender equality. Our performance in family planning has been extremely impressive, and we should all be very proud of it. But uh, our record on gender equality has not been that stellar, but events like this, occasions like this, give me sense that we are moving in the right direction. When I see almost 50% students who are women, I see 90% of women, 90% uh, of the medalists who are women, and so we are going in the right direction, and we are feel very uh, comfortable where we are going. But at the same time, if you look at our own uh, data, we see that still we have sex ratio, uh, which is one of the worst in the world. And it is to be expected for some reason, because uh, we've seen that trend in other countries of East Asia, especially China and Korea, where as fertility declines, people want to select the gender of their children. Even though sex selective abortions are prohibited in our country, but we still are seeing that we have 45 million missing women. So I think looking at that will be important issue. Other important issue from gender perspective will be aging. As you know that women tend to live longer and they also face greater adversity during old ages because of their social uh, poor social bargaining power. And addressing these inequalities in old ages and supporting women will be another challenge that we'll face and population scientists like you will help in terms of uh, providing policy makers some of the answers and uh, the uh, definition of problem. Sixth area that I want to highlight is data quality. And you know, India has made huge progress in many fields and we are world leaders in several, uh, several areas. But there's one area where we are 300 years, 300 years behind the developed world. Can you tell me which that area is? Okay, so that area is the registration of births and deaths. Europe had a system of meticulously registering all deaths and births in uh, 1400 and 1500. And as population scientists, you would have studied that that helped in understanding several demographic trends and phenomena. For example, research, researchers could compare the data from French side and Flemish side of Belgium, and they could see how cultural factors and religion affects fertility. This data also helped in terms of developing life tables, model life tables, which are used still today. But when we look at our country, uh, it's sad to see that about 30% of deaths and about 15% of births are still missed. And in addition to a lack of uh, perfect data on births and death, we also, uh, uh, the quality of our survey data still needs to improve. And of course, uh, IAPS has been at the forefront of improving data for uh, survey data, but I'm not talking about only IAPS data. There are a large number of other uh, organizations which are collecting data, and we have to see what point the quality of data uh, it is uh, there. I used to deal with the socioeconomic caste census of 2011, and that data had large number of holes large number of missing value, large number of inconsistent value. And so improving the quality of data will be one challenge that all of us will have to face. But at the same time, 
how to make good inference from poor quality data, how to make uh, valid inferences from poor quality data, how to impute values will be one challenge that we'll have to face. And the finally, one area which will be very fascinating and you can't live without that will be issue of technological innovation, which provides huge opportunity for population experts. The future of population studies will be shaped by new technologies like big data, machine learning, artificial intelligence. It is essential for you to stay informed about these advancements. Artificial intelligence is not only for uh, uh, sciences or other uh, uh, disciplines, it is as important for uh, population studies too. And you'll have to be mindful also of the ethical considerations and data privacy issue while, while you uh, work uh, in your professional lives. So these are uh, some of the challenges that will con confront uh, policy makers uh, in this country and they will turn to people like you and the people with your, your skills to find options and answers to these critical questions. So I can assure you that you're embarking on a career which holds the key to effective economic planning and unleashing the country's potential. As Dr. Bell mentioned that when you get out of the door, doors of uh, IIPS, you will be working for yourself and your family, but also for the country. And that is, uh, that is a, uh, with, with that pride, you should be leaving this uh, uh, occasion. And uh, you should also uh, see that, uh, uh, and I support the two uh, things that Dr. Bell mentioned. One, that uh, continue to be curious, continue to work, work hard to learn more. Uh, learning is a lifelong uh, thing that you need to pursue and also share and give it back because uh, you are privileged and there are large number of un uh, the, uh, people who didn't have the privilege of uh, being being here being going to college and uh, uh, it is all our responsibilities it's responsibilities of all of us that we continue to work for improving the lot of uh, those who are not as lucky as we are so remember that you have to approach each problem with uh, curiosity, but also with compassion and strive to uh, work towards excellence in your, in your job. And with your talent and dedication, you can shape not only the uh, future for yourself, but future for all of us. So finally, congratulations on your graduation. Best of luck in all your future endeavors. May your journey be filled with success and fulfillment, and God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And let's all stand for national anthem.